Hey, I'm John. Welcome to Mr. G's Workbench and part four of the MI24 Hind build, uh, which is uh, the Eduard boxing of the Zvezda Kitten 148 scale. If you recall, uh, at the end of the last episode, we got the fuselage uh, completely assembled. We riveted it with Micro Marks uh, rivet decals, and we've got this, uh, this uh, mahogany primer on, on the fuselage. I also got the wings and the gear doors are primed up as well, so they're good to go. The paint scheme we're going with, I you know, the Tiger one is impressive, but that's that's for an air show. It's not like a, a regular line helicopter, and I don't I don't think an air show helicopter is going to look quite as good loaded up with weapons, and I want this. To, to have weapons on it. I'm going with the the next option which was 0219. That's to me this is the classic uh, hind paint scheme. It's that sand yellow and green over a, a light blue gray underside. So I'm gonna go with that. This one's got a shark's mouth. It's got a little cartoon character on the one door. So I, to me more what I'm looking for uh, the only other option I had considered was 0220, which is this three-tone green and gray scheme. But uh, we're going to go with the uh, the traditional. Uh, I mean, you see hinds everywhere. They look like that. So uh, we're going to go with that, with the shark mouth. Uh, my train of thought on this is I'm doing the underside last because it'll be easier to mask off. If I mask, if I paint the bottom first, and mask it off. I'm going to have to constantly worry about uh, spraying, you know, overspraying it. And then with the, if I use the putty along the sides, then as I paint the upper surfaces, I'm going to have to put more putty. I'd rather just do masking putty, you know, to do the the yellow and and green, and then at the end take all that masking putty off and just run a bead around here and do the underside. So that's that's the route I'm going. So we're gonna get into that. Um, disclaimer, I'm not gonna show you the, you know, me painting at the paint booth. Um, number one, it's, it's a little difficult. I can't really talk while I paint without inhaling lots of toxic fumes. So I just, I do the paint one coat at a time. And as I finish each color, I'll come back and we'll discuss, you know, what I've got done, all right? So that's where we're at with that. Uh, so before we get started, thank you for, for tuning in, first of all. I appreciate it. And uh, if you're not subscribed, I hope you'll consider subscribing. Uh, just hit the uh, subscribe button. It's free. Hit the bell and be notified every time I put out a new video. And, and my, my release schedule is irregular, to say the least. So uh, if you can subscribe, that'd be great. If you're already subscribed, thank you very much. And finally, uh, big shout out as always to my uh, channel members whose names are currently scrolling up the screen. Thank you guys, one and all. Uh, I appreciate you guys being, uh, being my channel member family and uh, your extra support is, is greatly appreciated. If you're interested in becoming a channel member, it's $1.99 a month. You just hit the join button at the bottom of the, uh, underneath the screen there, it says join. Just hit join, it's $1.99 US a month. So uh, thank you guys again, one and all. And that being said, uh, let's jump in and I'm gonna get the uh, get that sand yellow color on. We'll take a look at it and see, uh, see what we think, all right? First color is on. Let me just show you. Like, frightened to pick it up. So we've got that, that yellow sand color on. And first thing I'd like to point out is that this real color, Russian grayish yellow, is definitely more gray than yellow. Uh, I should have figured that out ahead of time, but I was so enamored with the idea that this would be the color. It's not, it's too light, it's very pale. It's a very pale yellow, it would probably be good for other applications. So I went back to an old favorite, I went back to Tamiya XF60 Dark Yellow. I use that instead. So what I did was, uh, you saw I had the mahogany base laid down on the on the helicopter. Uh, I came in, I did a, a very thin marble coat 
of the dark yellow straight out of the bottle. Well, thinned, but you know, not no other color is added to it. Uh, I did that. I did a marble coat, and then I I missed it on a, a light coat of the dark yellow. Then I went in. Once I was satisfied with the color saturation, I came back and I lightened the dark yellow with AK's uh, Russian uh, grayish yellow. Uh, this actually was good for lightening the dark yellow. And then what I did with that was I went in and I highlighted the center of, of you know each panel area. And uh, when I was done with that, I felt the contrast was a little too high. I came back in, I mean this is all by eye basically, and I took some more of the dark yellow, added it back into my uh, my faded color, uh, thinned it out some more. By the time I, I missed it on the final coats, I was probably around 80% uh, uh, Mr. Leveling Thinner, 20% paint. But I'm very satisfied with the, with the coverage, I like the look of it, uh, now there's just enough fade and enough... Uh, color variation uh, to make me happy. So I've got that on. I'm going to let this dry overnight. I did the wings as well. I did the uh, pilot's door and I did the gunner's uh, hatch. So it's all that's all done. The next thing is going to be the green. Um, that'll be tomorrow. That I'm going to use that Russian green color I got from AK. Uh, it's up on the shelf. It was like Russian modern green or something, but I, I think it'll be fine uh, Like I said, this will be the first time I use this masking putty. So next time you see me It'll be with uh, the green on the fuselage. All right Second color is on. We did the green and I used the Russian modern green and it was just fine. And the uh, looks like everything will line up pretty good. That'll be there. I had to do a touch up to get this one to match up a little better, but it's done. So that'll look like that. And there's the other side. Uh, considering, let's see, I could probably touch that up again. I'll hit that tomorrow. Uh, I got to touch up that. I got to touch up around this, uh, the rotor area. Uh, I was too clever for my own good. I used the masking putty. I stuffed it in here to, to cover this. And pulling it out became really tedious. Uh, if you use some of the putty itself to wick up uh, pieces that stay behind, it works. So I, I'm really, actually I'm very happy with this stuff. Uh, I, I get it. So it's what, what's really wild is like tomorrow when I open this up again, it'll all have assimilated back into one big blob. But it's great. You can pull a piece off. The, the secret to pulling it apart where it doesn't come apart like taffy is when you go to pull a piece off, try to snap it like at a 90 degree angle from itself and it'll snap off as opposed to if you pull it, it just stretches like silly putty. So, you know, word to the wise, learn from me, uh, from my uh, mistakes. 
But other than that, I'm, I'm happy with the color overall. I, I came in, same thing with the green. Uh, I added a couple of dots of the uh, of that gray yellow to lighten it up. And it looks a little stark right now, but uh, after I finish touch-ups and everything, I, I think it'll all look good. Uh, the next thing we're going to do, I'm going to let this dry overnight. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to put a line of the putty around here. And we're going to do the bottom uh, with, the, with this RLM 65, which is supposed to be a, a good match for the light blue underneath. And, uh, and then we'll be able to move on. Uh, again, I don't want to put these on until they're all painted up. And uh, then I can, once, once they're completely painted... I'll install them onto the fuselage to this way I can weather everything as one. So we'll leave that overnight and we'll revisit this tomorrow. So the underside is done and I'm happy with the finish. Uh, I use the same color for the insides of these gear bays. Uh, ultimately once the weathering is on I think it, it'll be neither here nor there. I also painted the undersides of the, the wings got some touch-ups to do with the green as you can see I had two spots where I lost rivets one of them is right there on the on the left wing uh, I'll touch that up uh, shortly the other spot where I lost rivets was over here here's a shot of it without the rivets where it peeled off that peeled off using the masking putty uh, the ones that came off here came off with the uh, tape I was using to mask. So it is what it is. But overall, I'm really happy with that. So let's move on. We'll get the rest of the stuff painted up so I can get the gear legs on. I got to paint the wheels. Uh, I'm going to at least get the wheels on so I can stand it up. And then uh, everything else will kind of spring from there.
We're done with the hind. Here it is. And I'll show you some close-ups here. Uh, I got mixed feelings about this build. Uh, overall, I enjoyed it. I like the end result. Uh, but I'll show you in the close-ups uh, what I'm concerned about. Uh, the first thing that I had an issue with was the uh, the fit of the canopies. I told you earlier there were two-part canopy for the rear section of the cockpit. And uh, when all was said and done, I found that I, I had a gap. Uh, I found it too late. Sake of disclosure, I rushed to finish this for the uh, Austin contest. And sitting today, the day after, uh, I can see some of my mistakes. And that's one of them. I, I didn't address, there's a small gap between the two canopy pieces. So that was my first issue. Uh, the second problem I had is, is a personal thing because I just, I have no dexterity when it comes to handling uh, small photo etch pieces. So uh, I had some issues. I wound up leaving a couple of them off. Uh, the antennas I put on uh, that go on top of the tail. Uh, honestly, I was very happy with them from my level. Uh, I was satisfied with how they sat on the on the fuselage. They blended in relatively well, and I was able to install the. Uh, I used some Easy Line for the two uh, antenna wires going from the antennas to the tips of the horizontal stabilizers or whatever they're called. So I had an issue with that, but it worked out in the end. Uh, one of the big things I did. Uh, which would be a complaint about the kit for me is the uh, the landing gear legs are a little spindly and during uh, when I was removing the masking from the the transparencies I popped one of the legs off and I almost shit a pill doing that if I was to do another one with the gear legs out I would probably epoxy the individual pieces together to kind of reinforce them so uh, the other thing I did today, which was my spasticness, was uh, I was moving the helicopter, the nose hit the workbench, and I broke the gun off in the front. Uh, I would probably get, if, if there's a brass uh, barrel set for the that front gun, I would probably use it next time. Uh, the plastic one just seemed a little too spindly. It's not particularly detailed. I tried to drill the, the barrels out with uh, minimal success. So th those were my big complaints. The The rotor assembly went together well. Uh, it's very robust. I'm happy with that. I left it unglued so I could pull it on and off to, to move the kit around. Um, the other issue I had, which was a, a John issue, was the the door that I have open to the cabin. Uh, the, the pole that when you open the doors out, they're like clamshell. Uh, there's a pole that extends to hold them open, and uh, I looked at mine today, and it's got a curve in it because it's. I stuck it in without really checking to see where it was sitting, so it's bent. So be careful with that if you do it. Uh, I was happy with the level of detail in the engine compartment that I left open. I added some lead wires and painted them up, uh, and for me, it's just enough detail. Uh, the only thing I don't have that. Edward didn't provide, and I notice in this Vesda boxing, they give you decals for inside the engine doors because there's like a red stripe with numbers on it inside. Uh, Edward doesn't give it to you, but Zvezda does. So, point of reference. Uh, the other thing uh, that I had an issue with, and this is an Edward thing, was the straps that hold the uh, flare dispensers on the back of the tail. Uh, the the cables or wraps or whatever they are, the straps that go around, uh, they weren't the right size. Uh, I wound up, one of them, even though I tried to center it, they were short. You know, it doesn't look like it connects at the bottom. So I'm sure the people at Edward would tell me that was me. So um, the only other thing was all that, all that Edward has you use for armament is the anti-tank missiles they give you, which are really nice, by the way. And I like them. Uh, I wound up pulling two rocket pods out of a Kitty Hawk kit uh, because a lot of the pictures, even in Edward's book, show those rocket pods on the wings. So I use those. The ones that uh, Zvezda gives you with the kit, they're they're big. They're the Czechs didn't use them, so they were pointless. Um, 
Everything else went together well. The 3D printed exhaust they give you fit like a charm. So overall, I like the kit. My build of it, uh, I like the look of it, like I said, but it's not contest quality. Uh, I, like I said, I brought it to Austin. I didn't place at all with it. And when I got home, the more I looked at it, the more I realized why. So, so be it. But in any event, it's done. That's it for today. Thanks for stopping in. Uh, if you're not subscribed, I, I hope maybe I convince you to subscribe today with, uh, with this build. Uh, let me know what you think down in the comments. Uh, if you've built this kit or if you have the Edward boxing, if you see this boxing anywhere, pick it up because it's, it's a bargain no matter how you look at it. Uh, it's it's the, for the price of the kit and a little bit more, you're getting like a ton of aftermarket, you're getting 10 different markings, uh, you're getting resin, 3D printed parts. Uh, highly recommended. Till the next time we get together, thanks for stopping in. Uh, stay well, take care, and I'll see you next time.